Monica from Looking for Group. Today I'm here with Callum Fletcher, the Director of Esports at Illinois Wesleyan University. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to do this interview. Um, I'm, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it. I really sure. want to know about the history of your program. Can you tell yeah. me about how it got started? Yeah, so we started um, 2017 was uh, when I was brought on board, I think in September or August. Um, when I joined Illinois Wesleyan University, the university had already made a commitment to esports. Um, so there was there was already the the hey, we're going to do this. We're going to we're going to try and do it right. Like we need someone to come on board and, and help us do it right. Um, and that's where I came in. So we, we started in a computer lab on campus. The, the following year, we moved into our first esports arena, um, had 21 computers in it or sorry, 17 computers in it. Um, it was a really cool space renovated in the student center. Um, I think it's I mean, it, it was viewed as one of the best spaces in collegiate esports at the time. Uh, and, and looking back at it, I mean, it was it was it was awesome, but it was pretty standard. Um, and uh, then over the course of this last summer, we actually just moved into our new space. So um, the, the new facility is is quite game changing. But yeah, we've, we've had a, a kind of a quick little like we've been here for about three years now and, and we've gone through two esports facilities and we've hired two full time staff. And I mean, it's it's, it's going and rolling. Sounds like it's really growing. Yeah, you know, it's 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 kind of always busy. Um, and it's, it's cool though, because I, I think you see a lot of universities that have like, um, they, they, they struggle, right? They, they struggle to get esports resources. They struggle to get more support from the university or like the university kind of comes in and says, we're going to get into esports, but like they do it very one dimensionally where they say like, we're going to get into esports, but we're going to do it this way. Um, Whereas Illinois Wesleyan has been great because they've kind of come in and said, hey, we want you to be the expert. We want you to lead this. Mm -hmm. um, help us take it to where like we know it can be. Um, and so they've been super supportive. They've enabled us to grow. They've empowered us to grow. Um, and, and the results speak for themselves. Sure sounds that way. So you, you mentioned this new facility and, and I can tell you really want to talk about it. So I'm going to just <laughs> hand it over to you. Tell me about the facility. What, what, what's, what's so awesome about it? What kind of computers you got in there? What peripherals are you using? I'm sure all the prospective students watching now want to know. Yeah. So I actually have a video I'll send you after this for our new facility. It's kind of our, our video, video tour that we made. Um, we have a 5,700 square foot training facility. Wow. Um, it is a standalone building. Um, so we're, we're not a part of the student center. We're not a part of like the, the cafeteria or the library or whatever. I mean, it is the esports training facility. Um, 5,700 square feet uh, and it's, it's, it's perfectly used, right? So you come in the front door and you've got a lounge where students can come in and hang out. Um, you've got the Coliseum, which is our like tournament room. It's our stadium, if you will. Um, you have a student worker office. You've got our, our, our coaches, staff, uh, and offices. You have a conference room um, with like a kitchenette and a TV and a whiteboard for note taking and what have you. You've got um, two separate play spaces. Um, so there's a like varsity dedicated space on the upper level. And then on the lower level, it's two stories. Um, on the lower level, um, there is uh, more of like a community oriented play space. Um, about 54 computers total um, throughout the facility. Um, we've got a broadcast studio that's partnered with HyperX. Um, all the peripherals in the facility are HyperX, but students are welcome to bring their own as well. Um, all the chairs are respawn. Uh, computers are provided through ByteSpeed and Gravity Gaming. Um, we have a, the apparel is by Acquire. I mean, it's, I can, I'm confident when I say that this is the best esports facility in collegiate North America currently. I it sure sounds that way. I'm I'm envisioning it in my head, and I'm just like, wow, that's that's always kind of what I've had in mind for, um, you know, some of the programs that I've built as well. It's like th that end all be all arena space. I, yeah, I I always say that like we're gonna get to a point one day where collegiate esports. Uh, so you, you when you when you go on YouTube and you see like locker room videos from these big football mm -hmm. programs, right? And they're like showing you like how like these locker rooms have like barber shops. Right, um, and right. they've got like the wall of apparel, right? I've always had this mental note that like we're going to get to a point where collegiate esports arenas are the locker rooms of football stadiums, right? They, they they are going to be like decked out spaces with toys and gizmos and gadgets and, and arcades and pinball halls and all sorts of stuff like this. Um, 
And so this is kind of our first step towards that, in my opinion. Yeah, it sure sounds that way. And, you know, including the kitchenette and, you know, the community area, it just sounds like mm -hmm. a really great place to hang out with some pals. So you said you had about 51 computers. Can you tell me about how many students you have in the program who are competing at the varsity yep. level? And then talk a little bit about maybe the casual group as well yep. and how you integrate those communities together. So COVID makes things challenging. Mm -hmm. um, we have 54 computers. Um, of those 54 computers, I would say right now, about 40 of them are being used. Um, we we don't actually allow students not in esports inside the esports facility right now mm -hmm. because of COVID. Um, and it's actually done really well. We've taken a lot of safety precautions. We have um, zero cases in esports throughout this entire school year so far. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, we have the what we do. We do things pretty uniquely at Illinois Wesleyan. So like everyone knows Illinois Wesleyan esports for its competitive teams, right? Our League of Legends team is one of the best in the country. Our Fortnite team um, is currently ranked number three in the play versus uh, national leaderboards. Um, our, our Rocket League team is like a bubble team to the Collegiate Rocket League, and, we're, and we've got a great coach that we were starting to work with, so we're excited about that. Um, our, our teams are very, very, very good at the varsity level. And I think something that is really, really cool that we do that I don't think a lot of other schools do is we also have a B and a C team. Mm -hmm. um, and so typically what will happen is when you see these schools with like these big power teams, they have one team, right? They have their varsity team. Um, we have A, B, and C teams for all of our games. Um, so, you, so you have the opportunity to come into Illinois Wesleyan and play at the highest possible level. But if you're not necessarily a varsity level player, like we still have opportunities for you to be involved and compete. Um, and you'll still compete, you'll still practice, you'll still have access to the coaches, things like that, um, just at your skill level. So um, all of our students, we have 40 students currently in the program, all of them use the space, all of them compete, all of them practice, they're all on schedules. Um, and, and typically what we'll do is we'll also have a community aspect. We have a Titan Gaming Club that organizes events. Uh, I know right now they're working on a one versus one tournament as well as uh, movie nights. Um, we're gonna be doing some uh, Titan Talks series next semester where we'll bring in speakers from around the gaming industry to educate our students. Um, and so there, there is a very big element of community. And then obviously like when COVID's not a thing, we allow all students from Illinois Wesleyan to come on into the facility and play, um, which I think is really cool because again, it's one of those things that en you're enabled to do with that many computers. Mm -hmm. um, and so you get out of practice and you wanna play with your friends or, or on a Saturday, you're just trying to chill and hang out. Um, you're able to kind of call up your buddies and say, hey, like, we should, let's ho go, go over to the esports arena and play some Overwatch, or right? Uh, or let's let's get a group of people from the esports arena to play among us. And like, it's really fun when you're walking around the space and, and you walk downstairs and there's just like eight people scattered around the room and they're all playing among us. Um, or they're all playing like whatever they're playing together. It's just really fun to see that, that aspect. So um, community is like one of the biggest pillars that we have. And I think that gets overlooked because we have such good teams as well that like people are like oh they're a competitive program like oh they have this big esports mm -hmm. facility like they must be like really serious I'm like yeah we are we do take it seriously um but this is super cliche but I, i've said from day one and and it's one of the things that got me hired here is that i want to build a community of gamers for gamers by gamers right like i want to be able to jump in games with my players uh, i want my coaches to be able to talk shop with the players of teams that they don't coach uh, and, and I want everyone who comes into our esports facility to feel like they're welcome there. It sounds like you're the right man for the job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I hope so. <laughs> sounds hope so. like it's going pretty well. Um, I just I just got a picture, a mental image of everybody spread out playing Among Us and just had a thought. That's a really COVID friendly game in person or online. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. No, it's, 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 it's kind of cool. And we've done a lot for COVID. Like we have, we have um, plexiglass between every single computer throughout the esports facility. Um, we have... Uh, individual storage bins at every single computer so like if you want to bring your equipment you can leave it so you don't have to walk back and forth however you have to put your equipment in a storage bin mm -hmm. so it's not exposed to the outside air um no food or drink in the facility and this kind of sucks but like even if you want to just drink out of a water bottle you have to take it outside the facility to drink oh wow um, there is zero exceptions to taking off your mask in the facility um so if you want to make food or you're there for a long day you can use the kitchenette but you take the food outside and you eat outside hmm. um so we're, we're pretty strict on these measures, but again, it, like it's worked. Well, you said zero cases among the esports yep. community. So sounds like yep. you're doing great. 
So switching gears a little bit, sounds like you guys really have that arena down pat, that that um, competition and community. I want to talk a little bit about the academic side as well as experiential learning opportunities that you might sure. have to offer. Sure. Uh, do me a favor, just repeat the question. Sure. So tell me a little <laughs> bit about any kind of academic or extracurricular opportunities okay. that you might have implemented. Yep. So we are um, we are building out our, our, our student worker platform right now. We have eight student workers. They get to come in and do a variety of things from graphic design to content creation to uh, broadcasting to production. Um, and so we really w rely on these people to help us build out that platform. Um, anyone and everyone is welcome to come in and get that experience, right? So we get kids every single year who's like, I'd love to try casting. I've never done it before. Well, let's 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 get you some experience let's get you doing some practice casts and then we'll get you on the actual broadcast and and, and that massively helps the program the students enjoy it they love it um we are working on some partnerships around campus um to do some studies with computer science um we, we've talked with nursing in the past i mean there's there's a variety of things that we want to do um we're just focusing on the big puzzle pieces before we start moving into these kind of like extras right right um one of the other big things that we've been talking about is is kind of this employment pipeline right so um illinois wesleyan is extremely well known uh for getting students jobs after college we're number number seven in the united states for job placement after college and we're number one in illinois um, so something we do as a university extraordinarily well is getting students into the workforce i firmly believe that that should extend into esports right We've got exceptionally bright kids um, and, and, and our students work hard. So we are very proactive in trying to streamline our students into the workspace. Um, quite literally, just before we jumped into this meeting, um, I got a contact from a, a friend out in New York asking for any alumni that we had looking to move into esports that they could hire. Hmm. Um, that's the kind of people that come out of our program, right? Uh, we've got multiple students that have had internships in the esports space, have been tournament directors in the esports space as interns. Um, these kinds of experiences that you're going to get through our esports program allow you to then turn that into exp uh, experiences in terms of internships or, or, or summer jobs or whatever it may be, which will then in turn obviously help you when you graduate, right? So, so we really, we really do strive to create this environment that you can come in and say, "Hey, I'm interested in tournament events or event management, right?" Okay, well, let's organize some events together, right? Um, and and once you have that experience, we'll get to a point where you will then start running bigger events. So, I'll tell you a story about um, Johnny, Johnny and Eric, who are my Smash Club presidents. Uh, they just graduated this last year. Um, Johnny and Eric ran our Smash Club, which usually brought in around like 20 to 30 people um, for weeklies. Um, we created an event called Smash of the Titans. Um, and Smash of the Titans was our like regional event. Uh, and the first event they brought in probably like 50, 60 people. Um, and, and, and there was a lot of supervision and, and they ran the broadcast, they ran the production and, and they got involved. And I was really there just to support and facilitate and help them where I needed to help them. Um, and then they did another Smash of the Titans and then another Smash of the Titans and another Smash of the Titans. And they built this platform out to the point where we were bringing in probably about 175 kids um, on average for each of these regional events. Um, and it became like one of the premier Smash tournaments um, in the Midwest hmm. as students, right? And because of that experience, they were able to then get um, internships and jobs and and that that is meaningful experience on a resume and 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 Johnny uh, ended up doing an esports related internship running events um, out in uh, Davenport I believe it was um, so we're we're very proactive in creating experience meaningfully at Illinois Wesleyan so that it can help you down the line wherever that may be it wow it sure sounds like you have some success <laughs> stories to share that's really awesome thank you for taking a moment to tell me that story that that's really great yeah. and any prospective students hearing that now i'm sure are feeling inspired i hope so yeah so let's inspire them one more time the last question i have for you is for anyone who's looking right now to enter an esports program either specifically yours or just generally on their search what piece of advice would you leave them with as a coach, as a director? Easy, without a doubt. Uh, do your research. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of programs in the United States that I would recommend students go to. And then there are a lot of esports programs in the United States that I would recommend students avoid. Um, 
and and you will not know what those programs are unless you do your research and have your parents do your research uh, or do their research. Um, and, and if you have a teacher looking out for you, have them do their research, right? You, you want to do a few things. You want to go somewhere where you are going to be academically successful. Um, that should be the number one priority no matter where you go. Um, find a school that you will enjoy being at first. Um, Esports should be second. Um, and it doesn't have to be like first and second, right? Like they can be like one to one. Um, but if you don't enjoy the school, you're not going to enjoy the esports. Um, the second thing you need to understand is the staffing structure of the program. Um, are you, or, or not only the staffing structure, but like from the top down, right? So if, if you're a challenger League of Legends player, do you want to go to a school that has a silver League of Legends team? Hmm. The answer is no. But unless you do your research, you're not going to know that kind of thing, right? Um, and I've had students that were offered full rides to go to other schools, other like from my school, uh, from Illinois Wesleyan, they were offered full rides to go to other schools and, and they turned them down because the, the caliber of the team wasn't where they mm. wanted to be. Do your research. Then you need to look at the staffing structure, right? Is this one person overseeing six different games? Okay, well, what kind of resources are you going to get as a student then? Um, are you looking to develop your skills because you want to go pro okay then what's their coaching support structure mm -hmm. right a lot of universities don't have full-time head coaches um, or they'll have student coaches do you want to have a student be your head coach and do you feel like that's the best development for you on that track um, then look at the resources that the universities provided the like esports do they have a facility okay what does their facility look like is it five computers in a computer lab but there's six games that are in the esports program. Okay, well then you're probably not going to be using the space that much, right? You, there's there's a lot of questions that I think often don't get answered by students um, because they get encapsulated by like I want to do esports and I want this to be what I want it to be, um, and it can be. You just need to do your research and understand what you're looking for. We heard it here. You heard that's, it here that's, that's first, folks. Do your <laughs> research. And that's what Looking for Group is for. So go forth and research all of the schools and get the information you need to make your decision. I think that's a great place to leave off here. Thank you so much for your time today, Coach yeah, Fletcher. Of course. Thank you. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for having me. Of course.